All right, let's do question 5.3. This is the last question of the paper, and so we expect some challenges. Alaska is one of the states in the USA. Anchorage is the largest city in Alaska. An annex to D, whenever you see that, you go find your annex to. I have my annex to here, right? It's got a big globe on it. It shows a part of the, the globe indicating the shortest distances in nautical miles between Anchorage and a few selected cities in the world. So a nautical mile is larger than a mile. Do you see that there? But a mile, right, a kilometer is smaller than a mile. Okay, so we're probably going to have to do some conversions. So we're just going to have to keep our wits about us and make sure that we answer these and read these questions correctly. Use answer D and the information above to answer the questions that follow. Determine in nautical miles, so that's great, Not any, we don't need to do any conversions, the distance, the difference in the distance from Tokyo to Honolulu and from Washington to Anchorage. Okay, so let's see. What is the distance from Tokyo to Honolulu? There it is. Then what is the distance from Washington to Anchorage? Washington to Anchorage. Now we want to find the difference between these two values. So we're going to say, 3350 minus 2900. That's the difference. Difference means subtraction. Okay, 5.3.1. So we say 3350 minus 2900. And that is 450 nautical miles. Remember, it actually means something. So you have to put in your units. I do this in my head. If you can't do it in your head, you know where to put it. Your calculator, right? So make sure that you are following my logic there. Let's look at the next question. The next question, we knew it was coming. Convert to kilometers, right? The distance from Berlin to Anchorage. So we're going to have to go from nautical miles to miles and then to kilometers. So we're going to be doing the most, okay? But first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the distance from Berlin to Anchorage. So here's Anchorage. Where's Berlin? There's Berlin. So it's 3950. Okay, so that's what we start with. 3950. So let's now convert it to miles because that then allows us to convert it to kilometers. So one nautical mile is 1,151 miles. So it means that there's going to be more miles than nautical miles. When we know that there's going to be more, we do a multiplication, right? It's all about logic when it comes to these conversions. So we put here 3950 times 1,151 and we write that down. 4546,45 and we have to put miles in there. It's very important that you put in your units because there's nautical miles, there's kilometers, there's miles. It's easy to get confused. So now this is in miles. Now we need to convert it into kilometers. So one kilometer is only a portion of the miles. Do you see it? 0, 0,62. So what we need to do is we know that there's going to be more kilometers, right? There's going to be more kilometers than miles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if I know that one kilometer equals 0, 0,6215 miles, okay, how many kilometers, right, equal one mile? Okay, now to do that, we have to divide this side by 6215. But what we do to the one side, we do to the other side. Okay, because I want to get from that to one. Remember, when you're working with ratios, you're looking at times and divide. So I've divided that side by 0, 0,6215. I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, 1,6090. Save this on your calculator. This is the number we're going to now multiply by that number. Okay, because it's saying this is how many kilometers make one mile. Because we're going from miles to kilometers, we're going to say, well, 1,6090104.59 times 4546,45. Plug that into your calculator. And we have just got ourselves an answer in kilometers, right? So it's all about working methodically, okay? And I'm going to round this off to uh, two decimal places. 
remember when I'm rounding off to two decimal places, I look at the third decimal. And the third decimal here is five. So because it's five, we're going to round up. And that's why it is two, nine. Okay. And then you are done. We are then now going to move on to our very last question. Okay. And these questions are going to really make us think, which is good. We like to think. So let's continue. Last question here. Cargo needs to be shipped from Los Angeles to Honolulu and then from Honolulu to Tokyo. It's like Mr. Worldwide here. Yeah. Okay. Fino searched the internet to determine how long it would take the cargo uh, to reach its destination. Shown below are the search results. Some information has been omitted. Okay. So we have from Los Angeles to Honolulu. It's going to take me 10 days and 4 hours. And that's how many nautical miles. From Honolulu to Tokyo. We don't know what the time is. So we know that we're going to have to work out the time. We know that this is our lot in life. And it's going to be this many nautical miles. Apologies. This is Peño. I'm, I'm saying his name like, like an English gent here. Sorry. His name is Peño. And so we're going to now look at the questions. And they're going to help us know what's required of us. So it says, note, ship sail 24 hours a day. That's really useful because if it says 10 days, you could actually just be traveling for 12 hours and then taking a nap, you know, but that's not the case with ships. A, calculate the average speed of the ship rounded to two decimal places in nautical miles per hour. Okay, so we've got distance equals speed times time. We are working out speed, so we know we're going to have to change it up. But you should know this little triangle. which really helps us. Speed equals distance over time. Time equals distance over speed. And distance equals speed times time. If you don't know that, I have just taught you something. Make sure that you know this triangle. Very important. So we're going to work out the speed. So speed equals distance over time. Now, the distance is fairly obvious, right? It tells us there because it says calculate the average speed, right? Um, of the ship rounded to two decimal places in nautical miles. We can only work out speed if we have distance and time. So we're just going to use the Los Angeles to Honolulu. So our distance is 2607. Okay, so that's in nautical miles. Now, we can't use days and hours, right? You have to put it all into one, one unit. So we're going to convert our days into hours. We're going to say, okay, if I have 10 days... Each of those days has 24 hours. So that's how many hours is in 10 days. But then we have to add another four hours for those four hours that they gave us. So it's two, four, four hours in total. Now we know that all we need to do is we need to say, I'm going to sort of move this here. It's all become a little bit cluttered. Okay, then it becomes 2607 divided by 244. And our speed is going to be 10 comma 68. Do you see I did it to two decimal places? Remember, my third decimal is below five, so we round down that. So then we say it's nautical, uh, our units are quite important here, yeah? nautical miles per hour, okay? My eight is looking a little bit anorexic there, but that is your answer. Okay, so remember your units are very important. Students always, always forget their units and you get penalized for that. You don't want to be penalized for something stupid like that. Okay, let's move on to B. B is six marks, so we know that we're probably going to have to do a bit of working out. But that's okay because we're at the end and we're happy to finish off and finish off strong. So let's put um, our paper there and let's read the question. Hence... When it says hence, it means please use your answer from the previous question. That's what it's saying. Hence, determine the date and time of arrival in Tokyo. If the ship leaves Honolulu on 24 September at 4 o'clock and sails at the same average speed as it did in its previous voyage. Okay, so now we need to basically work out what this guy is. We're working out time. We go back to our beautiful little... Triangle and time equals distance over speed. So we're going to say here, time equals distance over speed. 
And thankfully, we have both distance and speed because we calculated speed in our previous question. So our distance here is slightly different. It's not the 2607, it's the 3350. Okay, so we have that there. What is my speed? Well, we know my speed is this, 10,68. Where do we get that from? Over there. So we have that there. Wonderful. Let's put this into our calculator. 3350 divided by 10,68. It is 313,670412. Okay, that's great. Now we need to convert that into, because um, this is time, so this is hours. Okay, that's quite important to note, it's hours. We need to convert this into days and hours so that we can figure out when the ship finished its voyage, when it arrived in Tokyo. Okay, how do we do that? Divide by 24. Okay, great. So we have 13 days. Right, we have 13 days. And then we have this 0, 0,696, water, water, water. Okay, but so we've accounted for the 13 days. So I'm going to minus 13. Now, this is saying it's 0, 0,696004993. Okay, of a day. Because here, yeah, remember, we converted this to day. So this is part of a day. So now we have to say this times 24. Okay, and so this is now, I've times it by 24 because now I put it back into hours. So I went from days, I went from hours to days. But now I'm going back to hours because this is like a random, it's not a full day. So now I've got 1,67 hours. Okay, so I divided this by 24 to get my 13 days. What was left over, I times by 24 to get back to hours. Okay, let's just, in our own minds, what is 1,67 hours? Okay, well, we know one hour, that's fine. So we're going to take that off. But then we have 0, 0,67. It's like, what does that mean? Well, 0, 0,67 of an hour. How many minutes are there in an hour? 60. So we're going to times this by 60, and it's 40 minutes. So this is one hour and 40 minutes. Okay? Now, they haven't asked for seconds, right? Do you see here, even when they displayed the time, they just put um, hours and minutes. So we don't have to do seconds. So forget about the comma 224719, leave that. We are where we need to be. We're in a good space. Let's now finish off. We're on the 24th of September. We've just left Honolulu. And it's going to take us 13 hours. I mean, 13 days, 1 hour and 40 minutes to get to Tokyo. Okay, let's do the days first. How many days were there in September? Remember the trick I taught you in another video. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. All the months that are inside the little valleys of my knuckles are your shorter months. So they have 30 days, except for February, which is 28, or 29 in a leap year. All the months that are on my knuckles have 31 days. So September has 30 days. Okay, so if we're sitting on the 24th of September, right, 24th of September, we have six days in September of my 13. Then I'm going to have seven days in October. Okay, so I'm sitting on the 7th of October. So we know we're there. So we counted for all our days, because 6 plus 7 gives me 13. Then if we left at 4 o'clock, we have to now add an hour and 40 minutes. So it's going to be 5 o'clock, there's my hour, and 40 minutes. So we're going to arrive at 20 minutes to 6 on the 7th of October. Okay, so do you see how I went about this so methodically? But if you struggled with this question, my advice to you would be that you need to work slowly. You need to say, okay, let me think about distance. Let me think about time. Let me think about speed. When I'm thinking about time, think about hours, days, minutes, seconds, right? Do you see how I knew my conversions really well and therefore I got to my answer quite easily? In the memo, it does show other approaches. I think though that this approach is the simplest and the most intuitive. But that is us done for this paper. I hope you found these videos helpful and I will try to post more regularly in the upcoming year. Good luck for your exams. Goodbye.